And I now call on Desmond Nelty to speak to and move the motion in his name. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Let me begin firstly by expressing my gratitude to members of the Literacy Commission, some of whom are in the gallery, for their efforts in producing the very substantial report that Labour has chosen as the subject of today's debate. And secondly, by praising my predecessor as Labour's education spokesperson, Rona Branken, and our former leader, Wendy Alexander, for their foresight in setting up the Commission. The report, the report was warmly welcomed in educational circles following its publication last month. It brings together findings and evidence from a variety of sources, prevents a very powerful case for literacy becoming our top educational priority, and concludes with a set of recommendations which I hope will be supported on all sides of the Chamber. In some respects, the report is a wake-up call. It highlights the importance of literacy to economic competitiveness, to social inclusion, as well as to individuals. Despite advances in information technology and the advent of new forms of communication, literacy skills are even more vital in the modern world. An inability to read and write renders the internet impossible to use. Arguably, the more communicative possibilities we create, the more disabling illiteracy becomes. Using international indicators, the report provides evidence that other countries may be progressing faster than Scotland, a disturbing finding given the lead Scotland once enjoyed. Historians, including Tom Devine and Arthur Herman, have, have chronicled the contribution made by Scots to the development of thought across a whole series of disciplines, including philosophy, economics, and mathematics, to literature, to the advancements of scientific knowledge and its application in industry, in medicine, and in the social sphere. Scots have been noted ever since the Age of Enlightenment for breakthrough after breakthrough in a wide variety of fields. Several explanations have been offered for the influence that Scots and Scotland have had on the modern world, economic circumstances, the restless character of the people, religious beliefs. But in my view, our education system was the cornerstone of Scottish achievement. For a long time, the most distinctive features of our education system were its universality and accessibility. Our people were taught to read, write, and count. A higher proportion of the population than elsewhere were given opportunities to acquire higher order literacy and numeracy skills through our schools and universities. Literacy and numeracy were not just at the center of the school curriculum, they were central to our definition of what was the foundation of a good society. That's not to say the system was always successful. The report specifically rejects the idea that there was a golden age. Many older people lack literacy and numeracy skills because they were failed by the system in the past. But the idea that society has obligations to ensure basic literacy for all and to promote higher order literacy skills widely is one I believe we can and should embrace in the form of a long-term commitment to zero tolerance of poor literacy. The Literacy Commission places literacy back at centre stage. It argues that it is unacceptable that thousands of our young people leave school every year with correctable problems that render them functionally illiterate without the basic literacy skills needed to function in a modern society. Low achievement amongst youngsters at school for whom there is no physiological or severe learning difficulty barrier which would prevent them acquiring adequate literacy skills can no longer be tolerated. We must ensure that there is a total commitment to a zero tolerance policy on illiteracy and put measures in place which ensure that this is achieved. The Commission estimates the scale of functional illiteracy among school leavers at around 13,000 young people every year and provides overwhelming research evidence to show that the most important cause of correctable poor literacy is socio-economic disadvantage. There is no doubt that our failure to equip some of our young people to read and write adversely affects their life chances. Especially in the most disadvantaged communities, a significant minority of young people who cannot read or write end up with no job, with health problems, or in trouble because of offending behavior. Frequently, all three, expensive for us, but even more costly for them. <coughs> the proportion of people <coughs> in our prisons and young offenders institutions who have literacy problems demonstrates the importance of early intervention, not just for the individual concerned, but for society. 
anything we can do to ease the frustration and exclusion that results from illiteracy will pay considerable dividends and this must be a key priority. The Literacy Commission identifies teaching and learning methods which are proven to be effective in acquiring basic literacy skills, even amongst people who face barriers in doing so. It also argues that we need to take specific actions to remove these barriers to prevent the acquisition of these skills, especially in areas of socioeconomic advantage. We know what works. It's listed in the Commission's report. Surely we can engineer a programme which would be successful. The motion suggests the implementation of pilot schemes in areas where there are the greatest concentrations of socioeconomic disadvantage, which would address some of the prerequisites of learning identified in the report. Earlier this week, Ian Gray and I visited Lockview Nursery School, where two-year-olds from Easter House were being given the opportunity to learn and play <coughs> in a warm and welcoming setting with trained staff. This provides a foundation for nursery and primary education, which goes a considerable way towards ensuring a level playing field with children from more advantaged backgrounds. It should be a precept that no child should fall behind even before they get into the education system. And we need to focus attention on children in the birth to three category because that is the most crucial period in terms of their personal development, the physical and brain development. If we don't concentrate our attention there and sort the problems out at that point, then we're going to lose these kids. The Commission cites health, health research that suggests disadvantage has a physiological impact on the body that affects not only health but brain development. Where, where the circumstances of disadvantage include chaotic lifestyles, parental drug or alcohol abuse, or domestic violence, the likelihood of educational success is severely compromised. We cannot allow this to blight the prospects of too many children in Scotland without intervening to give the children concerned, suffering from these kinds of advantage, more of a chance. <clears throat>